Rocket Exchange Stadium on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. The skies are clear and the Mets will take on the Braves in front of a pretty good crowd here this afternoon. It's the second game of a three-game series. Hello again, everybody. I'm Fran Healy along with Rusty Staub. Ralph Kiner will not be with us today. He'll be back next week. And we'll bring you to play-by-play as the Mets take on the Braves in the second game of this three-game series. And on the mound for the Braves, 1987, he was a member of the Tigers organization, traded over to the Braves for Doyle Alexander. His name is John Smoltz. Well, John Smoltz has had terrific stuff all of his career. A very good fastball, a good curveball. Uh, I, I guess even with this great club that they have had, as well as he has pitched, and as many strikeouts as he gets, I guess the one question, Francis, is why has he never been a 20-game winner? Hard to believe that John Smoltz has never won more than 15 games. He has great stuff, and he's pitching for a good ball club. Uh, John Smoltz, one of the top pitchers on this club, and uh, surprising to everybody that he has not flirted with 20 games, but sooner or later, he will win 20 games for the Braves. They got the uh, potential of about four or five guys winning 20 games with this club. It's hard to remember a ball club that has a rotation as as good as this Atlanta Brave ball club. Um, Kent Merker, who is the fifth man in this rotation, already has a no-hitter this year. Uh, it's, it's probably the most impressive group of guys back-to-back -back different years. They were, they were a good starting team before they got Maddox. Yes, they were, and uh, as we mentioned, John Smoltz will be on the mound today for the Atlanta Braves. Now, on the other side of the field, young man who won his first ball game with the Mets this season in St. Louis. Mauro Gazzo, even though he walked a lot of people in that, in that outing in St. Louis, really showed good stuff. He, he kept his poise. He was frustrated, but he did not go back and make pitches right down the heart of the plate to get back in, into the strike zone. Uh, he only gave up a couple of hits, a uh, very impressive battling performance, and he realizes that if he pitches well, he's got a chance to maybe stay in this rotation. Well, uh, he can really impress Dallas Green today. A big game for the Mets against the Atlanta Braves. The Mets right now four and a half games off the pace. Now we will honor America by standing for our national anthem. What's the The twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous flight For the rivers we watch Was the gallantly Flag was there. Oh, slaves of that star-spangled banner, wave for the land of the free. Robert Donaldson, an opera star, performing the national anthem here at Shea Stadium. Stay with us. We'll have the starting lineups right after these messages. New York Mets baseball is brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Buy your local Sherwin-Williams paint stores. The pros know. Ask Sherwin-Williams, an official sponsor of Major League Baseball by Nobody Beats the Wiz. For state-of-the-art home electronics, computers, cameras, music, movies, and more, Nobody Beats the Wiz. By Chemical Bank. Expect more from us. And by MCI. Well, back here at Shea Stadium, Jim Beecham, coach with the Atlanta Braves, close friend of Rusty Stobbs, exchanging lineups with Bobby Wine down by home plate. 
And if you want to take a look at successful teams over the past th three seasons, you have to look at those Atlanta Braves. It's an amazing record uh, for a team that has yet to win a World Series. Obviously, Toronto with back-to-back -back championships. Uh, Pittsburgh, who has well, they had a three-year run where they won the Eastern Division of the National League. Uh, they obviously last year fell a little bit short of what they were, and the Red Sox have been terrific. There's Bobby Cox, the manager of the Atlanta Braves. He was general manager, manager at one time. He moved down to the field full time. And John Sherholtz, not a general manager of the Atlanta Braves. And they have some fine young players coming out of those, out of, out of their minor league system, starting with the catcher who's not catching in today's game, Javier Lopez. Francis, this, this club has more young talent. They lost Chipper Jones at the beginning of the season for most of this year. You can see Javier Lopez, I mean, when... You talk about young catchers coming up into the big leagues and guys they expect a lot of. He is certainly one of them. I mean, his future is terrific. Well, he had 17 home runs, drove in 74 runs last year in AAA and batted 305. How about Ryan Klesko? Well, all of these guys, they it's like unbelievable that they would have the problems. You know, they gave different people up. You see Klesko, uh, he can play first base and the outfield. But they've been able to fill in for some really significant parts of their offense uh, at, at a time where it's a, they call it a changeover year if they're leading the division. Well, the changeover year for these guys, as we know, they brought up players from the minor leagues who are better than the veterans they had. Those veterans are good. I mean, Ryan Klesko is batting third on a team that won their division last year. <laughs> and he's hitting 326 with six home runs and 16 RBIs. And the, probably the brightest prospect was Chipper Jones, yeah, and he's, he's going to miss this year because he was injured in spring training. He was injured running to first base in the spring training game. He's out for the season. Well, we got a game here this afternoon, the Mets and the Braves, and the Braves lineup is brought to you by your Tri-State Ford dealers. Deion Sanders leads it off with the Braves to be followed by Terry Pendleton and then Ryan Klesko. The middle, or the middle three, Fred McGriff, Dave Justice, and Mark Lemke. And the bottom three, X-Med Charlie O'Brien, who's batting 333 and spelling Javier Lopez day games after night games and catching some night games. He's followed by Rafael Belliard and then John Smoltz. On the mound for the New York Mets is Mauro Gazzo. Mauro with that victory in St. Louis, a 1-0 record, a three earn run average. This is his fourth game, his third start. In 15 innings pitch, he has given up 11 hits, walked seven, and struck out six. The walks, most of which were in this last outing, very unlike Mauro Gazzo. And his defense looks like Segui at first, Kent at second, Vizcaino and Benilla short third. Left to right in the outfield, Cangelosi, Thompson and Orsalak humbly behind the plate. That's four and a half games behind the Braves coming into today's action and Deion Sanders will lead it off. Leads the National League with 15 stolen bases. Batting 309 now. Went into a little bit of a slump. Had his bats checked. You know, a lot of people have certain things checked. He had his bats checked and found out that he had bats that were 34 ounces rather than 32. He said it had a profound effect on him. Base of Mauro Gazzo, Bobby Bonilla in on the infield. Swung in a missed strike one. Sometimes I think when things like that come up Francis I wonder if there should not be a mirror you can look into so you can understand the real problem that's right that's right <laughs> but it was a good story understood <laughs> down low one and one on Deion Sanders who is using those 32 ounce bats Todd Humming flashing signs to Mauro Gazza on it just an absolutely gorgeous day here at Shea this is inside two and one well that is a gorgeous day hmm if you're close to Shea, come on out. If you're not, here we are. All right, foul out of play. So two and two on Deion Sanders. Don't forget tomorrow afternoon, these same two teams go at it. The meteorologists in the tri-state area are saying it's supposed to be another picture-perfect day. Two-two pitch to Sanders. Oh, that's a nasty change up right there. Good pitch from Gaza, one down. Good start. I'll say one thing about Deion Sanders. He's one of the players in the league that evokes an attitude from the fans. They either love him or they don't. Good for baseball. Good for a team as long as he keeps him 
under control. Sure. Exciting player. Still a show me player. Has to show the Braves he can do it all year. He gave up Otis Nixon. He's doing the job in Boston. It was an unpopular move, according to the fans in Atlanta. Yep. As you look at Terry Pendleton, he takes strike one. Pendleton, the most valuable player back in 1991. You see his stats right there. Four home runs, 16 RBIs. Outside, one and one. A lot of the baseball people felt that Pendleton was going to be expendable during the offseason, moving Chipper Jones to third base. Luckily, they didn't trade Pendleton. As he pops the ball way up in the air in the infield. Bobby Benilla fighting that son, calling for it. No? He gives way to Jose Vizcaino. One thing about Pendleton after he signed the big contract, he has come under a lot of controversy because of the weight gain and the fact that he tailed off last year, hitting only 272. You saying he's heavy, Rusty? Saying what exactly you said last year. <laughs> <laughs> the, you're going to try to get me. You're the one that starts throwing these chubby lines out, like, <laughs> like with our boy in San Diego, <laughs> Mr. Gwynn. <laughs> Swung out of this strike one. Oh, I'll tell you, folks. This is a convenient memory here on my right. <laughs> you saw those stats. Klesko with six home runs, 16 RBIs. As Rusty mentioned earlier, betting 3.6 outside to Klesko, one and one. Rumor had it that he, the Padres were trying to get him in that McGriff trade last year. The Braves smartly did not give him up. Good pitch of Gaza. One and two. Showing good command early. Carl Gazzo felt when he came out of high school, he would be playing football, I believe it was for Clemson. Instead, he signed with the Mets. Traveling around a great deal. Fresco hits a ground ball. Kent. To Segui, that'll do it for the Braves here in the first. Three up, three down. Play the half inning here at Shea Stadium on the Modell scoreboard. No score, the Mets and the Braves. The month of May heats up on Sports Channel. The New York Mets take the field against National League rivals. See Jeff Kent and the rest of Dallas Green's club slug it out with Barry Bonds and the Giants. Dave Justice and the Braves, plus Lenny Dykstra and the Phillies. Saturday, wake up with Dynamets, Sports Channel's baseball show just for kids. Halls of Fame profiles former hitting great Rod Carew. And see the U.S. prepare for the World Cup with the World Series of Soccer. It's all in the month of May on Sports Channel. And a Met fan here at Chase Stadium. A lot of Met fans in the ballpark today on just a gorgeous day. And... If you're a Mets fan, you want to know about their lineup. The Mets lineup is brought to you by Continental Airlines. Jose Viscaino will lead it off. He'll be followed by Todd Hundley, then Joe Orselak. The middle three, Bobby Benilla, Jeff Kent, and David Segui. The bottom three, Ryan Thompson, John Cangelosi, and Mauro Gazzo. John Smoltz with a 2-4 and four record, a 3.49 earned run average, will be the pitcher on the mound. You see the rest of his stats. 38 strikeouts in 38 and two-thirds innings. Jose Vizcaino steps in batting 278. First pitch is outside ball one. Good to see Modell's represented here on a big day for Modell's. Yeah. Saw Mitch Modell and Michael here at the ballpark. They were, they were really getting around the stadium. There's a strike one and one on Jose Vizcaino throughout the first ball. Modell, Modell did and you know, have to say hello in the booth. Good to see him. Absolutely. Ground ball to second base. Limke over to McGriff, one down. In a defense for the Braves, besides Limke, you got McGriff at first, Belliard at short, and Pendleton at third. Klesko's in left, Sanders in center, and Justice in right. O'Brien, Charlie O'Brien behind the plate. Good to see Charlie here at Shea again. Big question with Charlie, does he have that big orange chest protector he used to wear sometimes when he was here? <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of catches, Todd Hunley will bat now with one man gone here in the first. It's a little more of the red type. And a fastball hits the outside part of the plate. 0-1 on Todd Hunley. Hunley... Batting 297, eight home runs, 16 RBIs. 
How about the equipment for the catchers nowadays, Francis? Has that improved a great deal? Down and into Hundley. Chest protectors look like they've been about the same for a long, long time. Well, one time they had that extension on the chest protector down, down below. They did away with that, of course. And uh, he doesn't use the flap to protect his neck. No. Off his mask. Hundley pulls the ball foul. Of course, the shin guards are. Everything's lighter. I can tell you that. Now the only time you get some damage to the legs and the shin guards when you go when you get down to position, see where he's giving the sign. Now if that ball hits where those that shin guard has the break in it, that hurts. Still has the break in it when he's down like that. Inside to Hundley, two and two. Charlie O'Brien, I'm sure, had a lot to do in the meeting the Braves had last night prior to the series going over the Met hitters. So the pitches you will see from Char from John Smoltz is the way Charlie O'Brien the past few years has felt you should pitch his teammates when he was with the Mets. 2-2 pitch. Good hook. Outstanding curveball from Smoltz. Two down. Well, let's take a look at that curveball. This is a Major League Lord Charles. And here it comes. Oof. That is the overhand curve that has kind of left this game a little bit. Used to be that almost everybody had that pitch. I think it's easier to control the slider as Joe Orsalak steps in and takes a strike. And when you have a problem with the slider early in the game, it's easier to correct the problem than the overhand curveball. The overhand curveball, you have to have a feel for it. Ground ball up the middle, base hit. So Joe Orsalak picks up the first hit of the ball game. Well, he just continues to do a fine job for the Mets. Of course, he's done it almost every stop in his career. Oh, Ursulak on first base. The batter now will be Bobby Bonilla. You know, talking about that curveball, Rusty, you're absolutely right. You don't see too many overhand curveballs. At one time, the Mets had three guys that would throw it over the top. Doc Gooden, David Cohn, and Sid Fernandez. But it, I, it's just so much easier to correct the problem in the course of a game with a slider. And there's that curveball. So many mechanics involved in throwing that curveball, keeping it down, and keeping it, keeping that pitch in the strike zone. Outside the Benilla ball one. You can remember a lot of the guys coming out of the Dodger organization. They all threw straight over the top. They all had that big straight down curveball, left-handers and right-handers. The guy in the ballpark today, Don Sutton. Yep. Overhand curveball. Broadcasting for the Braves. And Bonilla hits the ball at the end of the bat. Sanders broke back. Now he comes in and makes the grab. So Bobby Bonilla flying out to center field. Met strand a runner here in the first inning. Field a score on the Modell scoreboard. No score after one. Big day here at Shea Stadium. Mets against the Braves. Second game of this three-game series. And it's Modell's Mega Mug Day. Got to go to Moe's as you look at Dallas Green. Mitchell and Michael Modell here at the ballpark. Where a lot of the people who work at Modell. So they have some great weather for their giveaway day here at Shea. And you're looking at Fred McGriff. Batting 298, 10 home runs, 24 RBIs. What a trade for the Braves. Pulled off by John Charles and McGriff. It's a high fly ball. Center field. Thompson makes the grab. One down. Now with one man down, the batter will be Dave Justice. Boy, do they have some thunder in this line? They really do. Dave Justice right now with four home runs, 10 RBIs, batting 297. This team got off to a fabulous start, and then they slumped for about 10 or 12 days. Hard to believe with that pitching rotation and the thunder that they have that they could slump. Well, this guy, when he gets hot, he is a streak hitter. He's 27 years old from Cincinnati, Ohio. 1-0 on Dave Justice. Last season he hit 270, but he hit 40 home runs and drove in 120. 
takes a strike one and one on Dave Justice. Seems like only yesterday when he came to the major leagues for good in 1989, they had him playing first base. Dale Murphy was in the outfield. Outside. No, no justice when you think about Dale Murphy not being with the Braves when they're enjoying some successful season. Class act. Very good player. In fact, Dave Justice mentioned that last winter. Little chop at the first base. McGee takes it himself. Two down. Never throw the ball as the first baseman to the pitcher unless you have to. That's the basic rule. Sagi could have easily, because of that slow roller, just tossed it. But that's a, a very difficult ball sometimes for the pitcher to catch. So whenever possible, first baseman should take it himself. Good job by David Sagi. And the batter now is Mark Allen Limke from Utica, New York. He takes a strike, 0-1. About an hour and a half from the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. Go one pitch. Lincoln hits a fly ball to left field. Here comes Cangelosi, and he uh, unable to make the play. Extra bases for Lincoln. Nice effort by Cangelosi. But Lincoln's on second base with a double. Lincoln continues to do it time after time for the Braves. The big question is why is Cangelosi so deep on such a little hitter in the opposite field? You see how far he came. Again, I stress the fact that you have to make some adjustments on every hitter. Left field is not his normal position. He's more used to playing center. Right now he's communicating with Mike Cubbage in the dugout. Mike moving the infielders and outfielders around as Charlie O'Brien steps in. Two minutes gone. We're in the top of the second inning. Runner in scoring position for the Braves. And O'Brien takes a ball. Ball that has that amount of hang time off a, a guy who is not a noted home run hitter in the opposite field. I agree. Should be caught. 1-0 on O'Brien. He's catching John Smoltz today. O'Brien pops the ball up. This guy, you know, calls for it. It's an easy play, and that'll do it for the Braves here in the second inning. They stand a runner in scoring position. Fail to score. On the Sherwin Williams scoreboard, there is no score here, Jay, and we'll be back. Sports Channel's new sport gives you the latest on sports. Get the scores, the highlights, the inside stories. Go behind the numbers and hear from players and coaches. Preview your team with pre- and post-game analysis and recap. It's all on Sports Channel's new sport. Uh, Jeff Kent will lead it off for the Mets. There's the line score as we go to the bottom of the second inning. Kent with batting 323, nine home runs, 28 RBIs. John Smoltz pitching to Kent. Smoltz, as I mentioned before, pitching to Charlie O'Brien, who's catching him today. And Charlie has caught all six of Smoltz's starts this season. Shades of Charlie O'Brien and Doc Gooden a couple years back. 0-1 on Jeff Kent. Swung on and missed. 0-2. When the season first started, it looked like Jeff Kent was playing t-ball. Everything he swung at, he hit, and he hit hard. Foul out of play. It also meant that all the advanced scouts were saying, he's so hot, but don't let him be the guy that's going to hurt you. That was a period of time where other people were not swinging the bat as well. He kind of went out of his zone to try to start get some pitches further and further out of the strike zone. And the 0-2 pitch. Ooh. Inside. <laughs> and close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've seen Charlie O'Brien over the years. He's a fine defensive catch. Quiet behind the plate. Very quiet. 
Ken hits a high fly ball, deep left field. Klesko going back and makes the grab. So the first baseman for the Braves in AAA last year just made a nice catch at the wall this year in left field. Klesko, a first baseman by trade. He's drifting back. He's got the glasses down. He doesn't know where the wall is. He really doesn't. He jumps, and he's right at the wall. You can tell he's not an experienced outfield player because the outfielder has to take a peek or has to know where that wall is. David Segui, the batter. Segui with the home run in last night's ball game takes up high. Ball one. Well, Klesko's not in left field for his glove. There's no doubt about it. They have no room at first base for him. They've made room in left field. Up high, 2-0. and oh. Ron Gant, long gone from the Brave organization, having had that injury on a motorcycle. Up high, 3-0 and oh on David Segui. I mentioned a home run in last night's ball game. Segui won for three last night. Yeah, that Gant thing was one of the interesting situations to happen in baseball in a long time. There's a strike, three and one. Imagine a, a motorcycle accident. Five million dollar deal. Over five. Hmm. Three and two on Sagi. Popped up. Belliard fighting the sun going out. Sanders fighting the sun coming in, and Sanders makes the grab. When Belliard put that glove up like he's got it. I know it really. I said, boy, he's don't have that one. He's, he was 20 <laughs> feet from the ball. <laughs> you can see he's trying to block it with, uh, you know, he doesn't have his glasses on to start off with, which is dumb. If you're going to struggle that much with the sun, but a lot of times, that's the sign for the outfielder. You know, you put the glove up, I have it. That's right. He doesn't have his glasses on, and he's struggling with the sun. Now, w w what's going on out there? Ryan Thompson taking a strike. I agree with you, especially on a day like today. Here at Shea Stadium, you have to have glasses. Bluebird day. 0-1 pitch is fouled off, so it's 0-2 on Ryan Thompson, who's been struggling with the bat lately, batting 241 now, six home runs, 18 RBIs heard guys who don't like to use the glasses but usually the manager says that's fine as long as you realize if you miss one and you don't have the glasses mm -hmm. on it's going to cost you there's Bobby Cox looking in saying where are those glasses those days are kind of gone now though swung on and missed strike three so Thompson goes down so go the Mets three up three down here in the second inning on the Modell scoreboard after two no score the Braves and the Mets Discover the defensive training secrets of America's finest baseball school in an exciting videotape. Baseball World's Defensive Drills video features professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky and the same revolutionary new training techniques that have produced Baseball World's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU National Championship teams. The Defensive Drills video vastly improves players' arm strength, running speed, quickness, agility, and infield and outfield defensive skills. Even coaches practice organization. Lou Pavlovich, Jr., editor of Collegiate Baseball Magazine, calls it a masterpiece, the best defensive drill video ever produced. Many professional players are excited about this videotape. Just ask Atlanta Braves superstar Fred McGriff. This is the instructional video that gets results. Baseball World's defensive drills video makes a great gift and benefits players of all ages and ability levels. To order your copy for only $29.95, have your credit card ready and call toll-free. 1-800-322-2700. That's 1-800-322-2700. It really worked for me. The Rangers, the two best teams in the East, collide. Only one will survive on the road to the Stanley Cup Finals. The Devils and Rangers clash in Game 3, Thursday, live and exclusive on Sports Channel. Well, back here at Shea Stadium, 
Rafael Belliard will lead it off for the Braves as we go to the top of the third inning. He'll be followed by John Smoltz and then Deion Sanders. First pitch to Belliard, up high ball one. So 1-0 one oh on the Braves shortstop. Just had John Morley in the booth. John Morley does a nice job here with Harry Stevens. Harry Stevens, yeah. Jimmy Brink. Some job. One and one on Belliard. Mauro Gazzo on the mound. Looking good so far. It's early here in this ball game. Well, he's got some nice changes off the breaking ball. He changes off the fastball. One and two on Rafael Belliard. Belliard had a great run, but has struggled of late. Only three for his last 25. At one point, he was hitting over 300. But three for 25 at this time, and a season can hurt you. Mm-hmm. Big time. We check with Eric Gregg. He said no swing. Brown ball is short. Biscayano plays the hop over to Segui. One down. With one man gone here in the third, the batter will be John Smoltz. Breaking ball up high, ball one on Smoltz. Mauro Gazzo coming off his first victory of the season against the Cardinals on the last road trip. Outside of Smoltz, 2-0. Oh. Gazzo, 28 years old. Birthplace, New Britain, Connecticut. Now resides in Rosville, Tennessee. And this ball has popped up and will be out of play. Morrow is telling me he still has a lot of family here in the tri-state area. And I'm sure they're proud of him. He was signed by the Mets as a minor league free agent in 1992. He originally signed with the Mets back in 1984. Foul out of play. Here's a high school standout in baseball and football in New Britain, Connecticut. So he thought he would be playing college football. Swung on in, foul tip. He said he was about to sign a letter of intent to play college football when the baseball scouts started coming around. 2-2 pitch. Put in play, high chopper to second base, Kent to Segui, two down. So far, Gazzo has had the Atlanta Braves fool out in front, way out in front. By the way, folks, this break in the action ought to be a great time to break for the great taste of Bud Light. It's a big hit with fans everywhere. It won't fill you up and never let you down. So make it a Bud Light. Center fielder, Deion Sanders. Gazzo's the kind of pitcher that you'd almost think would throw really hard. You know, big, strong guy. I'll guarantee you he threw harder when he was in New Britain than he does now. In order to sign, scouts look for those live arms. He has learned to work that breaking ball in. Well, he gets Sanders his first time up, struck him out. Sanders hits a line shot. This guy, you know, gloves it. That'll do it for the Braves. Here in the third, we play two and a half here at Shea, and on the Modell scoreboard, no score, the Braves and the Mets. Well, back here at Shea Stadium, some of the fans on hand for this Modell's Mega Mug Day. All kids age 14 and under received an insulated 22-ounce mug courtesy of Modell's Sporting Goods. I would like to remind you that this copyright telecast is authorized under television rights granted by the New York Mets solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the New York Mets and Sports Channel is prohibited. 1-0 on John Cangelosi. Cangelosi batting number eight in the lineup today. John Smoltz not looking as he... <laughs> 
as he was going towards the plate and wisely threw the ball anyway. Gangelosi will be followed by Mauro Gazzo and then Jose Viscaino. Foul off. That young lady was smart. She started retreating immediately on that line drive. <laughs> She's been trained well. And the 1-1 one -one pitch to Cangelosi. Third ball is called a strike, one and two. Braves and the Mets will go at it again tomorrow afternoon. Steve Avery will be on the hill against Eric Hillman. Avery and Glavin came up after Smoltz. Smoltz was an established starter with the Braves before the other two guys got there. There's a base hit in the center field. So John Cangelosi picking up the second hit in the ball game for the Mets. Talking about Glavin and Avery, they were signed by the Braves, developed in their system. Smoltz came over from the Tigers in 1987 for Doyle Alexander. It was a good trade for both organizations at that time. Doyle Alexander pitched very well for the Tigers when they were fighting for the championship and in their division. Pendleton way in on the grass. Gazzo bunts the ball up and they make, he makes contact with Charlie O'Brien. They get the sure out at first base. Cangelosi advancing to second. It's an awfully good bunt. So with one man down now, Jose Vizcaino will come to the plate. Jose has not been a big RBI guy. He has eight on the season. But I'll tell you what, what an acquisition by Joe McElvain and Jerry Hunsicker, Eddie Lynch, for this ball club. This guy ain't on, of course, David Siki around the same time. Talking with John Stearns before the game, and he was, like, amazed. He said the, the whole New York Met ball club changed dramatically when that took place. I said, no kidding. <laughs> John is a scout now with the Colorado Rockies. And a 1-0 pitch. 1-1. One one. Breaking ball misses outside. 2-1. and one. one man gone. We're in the third. Mention that game tomorrow afternoon. It's supposed to be beautiful weather again, so if you want to see the Mets play baseball, come on out to shed. It'll be Eric Hillman against Steve Avery. Hillman getting his first start after missing a start. Two-one pitch. Inside, three balls and one strike. Lemke jockeying with Cangelosi at second was not in his defensive position when that ball crossed the plate. Even though Cangelosi bounced back towards second, which I guess is what you intend to do, you also have to be able to cover your own position. Three and one. And Discaino. A high fly ball to center field. Cangelosi tagging up. Sanders in position to throw. Forget it. Cangelosi will make it easily to third base. So two men are gone now. And John Cangelosi on third. The batter will be Todd Hundley. They make reference to throws like that as parachutes. Kind of hang up there a little. No doubt. He's got no chance to get him, but he gives it the big high over the cutoff man. Short hop to third baseman. Mm -hmm. So two men are gone, runner 90 feet from home plate. Todd Hundley to take on John Smoltz. 
Down and in with the heater. 1 0. Oh. We saw Todd Humley strike out his first time up on a nasty curveball from John Smoltz. One zero pitch. Nice block by Charlie O'Brien. He can catch. He can catch with anybody in baseball. He made that look easy. Angelosi was ready at third. He got a good jump. The ball bounced in front. It helps pitchers' confidence so much to have that catcher behind the plate. You know he'll block the pitch. You can throw your best breaking ball. He'll block it if it's in the dirt. One thing Hundley has done this year is get closer to the plate. Takes a big rip, pops the ball up to left field. Cusco coming in, fighting the sun. He loses it, and he got the ball. A break for the Mets. Cusco fighting the sun all the way in, was unable to glove the ball. It's an error on Cusco. And a big break for the Mets. one nothing New York. Good call, Francis. You could tell it. He was struggling big time. He's got his glasses down. No, he doesn't. He's got the glasses up. Again, inexperience in the outfield with uh, Ryan Klesko has cost the Braves. He's got his glasses on. He didn't put them down. Lost his hat. He, he's probably so uncomfortable out there. He's not used to flipping those glasses down left field. And Joe Orselak loops the ball in left field. Klesko coming in. Can't make the play. Hundley scores. It's 2 0. Ball thrown away. Orsolak goes to second base. So Joe Orsolak driving in Todd Hundley, looping the ball into left field. Looked like Kresko had trouble picking that ball up also. He had. And he didn't have any trouble after he picked it up or letting it go. The only trouble was, number one, he had no chance to get the base runner, so he should have thrown the second. And he tries to make an impossible throw. Now watch this chunk. This thing airs all the way, a little short hop on the back wall. <laughs> I mean, that's just inexperienced, but that's a stupid play for anybody in the big leagues. He had no chance to get the runner. Well, Bobby Bonilla will bat now with the Orsalak on second base. It's 2-0 New York. But he takes the ball. Well, big break for the Mets. An error by Ryan Klesko. That have been the third out of the inning. You know, John Smoltz is trying to make up for the mistakes, but it's frustrating for the pitcher. And Bobby Bo pulling off that ball, hitting it off the end of the bat. One and one. I guess that's the toughest thing for a pitcher to do in a situation like that is to not give that emotional show that you're disappointed because you know the man is giving his best shot he's mm -hmm. just not an outfielder what would Gaylord Perry do under such circumstances he might walk out there and choke him <laughs> <laughs> Gaylord was tough on the players oh man inside two and one you got to keep in mind klesko has been driving in a lot of runs winning a lot of ball games for these Braves That's a tough field out there, Sun Field, to begin with. Early in the game, left field, then it goes to center, then to right. Two and two on Benilla. So two balls and two strikes on Bobby Benilla. Here in the third inning, it's two nothing. Mets on top of the bridge. Off the plate. Three and two. You know, one of the other things that a, a, a first baseman who has moved to the outfield probably has not worked on enough, you cannot run on your heels when you're an outfielder. You have to run on your toes because as your heels hit the ground, it jars your vision. It's one of the things that people who are inexperienced in the outfield can get to a habit of or mistakenly go to, and it, and it costs you. It's a high fly ball left field. Here comes Kruska. Now he pops the glasses down. And it's a... The ball falls in again. How about that? Kruska flipping the glasses down at the last minute. Belliard realized he was a few feet away from the ball. 
Belliard trying to make the play off his glove, and the Mets score another run. It's 3-0 New York. Boy, oh boy, that's a rough inning. Lemke and Pendleton telling Smoltz, stay with him, big boy. Boy, as soon as this went up, you knew this poor kid was saying, oh, my God, <laughs> not again. Oh, it slips. That's a tough sud field, too. Oh, oh. You gotta, you gotta, your heart goes out. You know, that's like picking on him when he's down, right? That's right. <laughs> he said, I finally got my sunglasses down. <laughs> now look what happens. Oh, forgive me. Unless you've been out there, you, you, you can laugh. And Jeff Kent hits a high fly ball. He's going to try it. Let's see. Now, Linky's in pursuit. Fighting the sun, calling everybody off, and making the grab. So the third inning here at Shea Stadium was the fly ball inning. Because of the fly ball, the Mets pick up three runs after three on the Modell scoreboard. It's Mets three, Braves nothing. Well, big day here for Models. It's Models Mega Mug Day. You got to go to Moe's, and we went to Moe's today. Here's Mitch Maslin from LA Gear throwing out the first ball to Fernando Vena. There's Mitchell Models trying to run the show, pointed to the scoreboard. His brother Michael on his right. So big day for Models. It was Mega Mug Day here at Shea. It's been a big day for the Mets because of the sun. We go to the fourth inning, and Terry Pendleton will step in, Rusty. All right, Mets ahead three to nothing. You know, coming out of the dugout, a few of the Mets players, let me tell you, as soon as they get out of the dugout, they put those sunglasses down and took a look up in the air. You can, you can bet on that. Pendleton grounds it foul, strike one. It is never an easy job with the sun here at Shea, but on a bluebird day with no clouds to kind of help you, it's even worse. And there's always a gusting wind that you never know what's going to happen with the ball. That's why it's important to be in batting practice and take fly balls during batting practice. Short fly ball of center. Thompson has the glasses down. He struggles a tad, but he's got it. Now, there's a veteran outfielder really struggling. He got the. Now, I saw Thompson coming out of the dugout, and he did flip the glasses down. You see the blue sky? No clouds up there. It's called a high sky, a bluebird sky. And it is tough. You throw a little wind in there. It's like those day games in Candlestick Park when it's completely a blue sky. Some of the most unbelievable misses you've ever seen. Well, here is Ryan Klesko. He got a pretty good round of applause from the <laughs> Mets fans. He'll be hacking hard here. He was robbed by Kent. Kent made a nice play to his right. Scooped it up, threw back over the first, and got Clusco. Clusco last year with 22 home runs, 74 RBIs in 98 games in Richmond. The only thing you do now is try to make up for it. It's a line drive. It is over Thompson. So he's going to get himself a double. Thompson didn't pick that ball up right away. He knew it was behind him. That's the only way to answer. Answer yeah, he, with your back. He did. He answered. He smoked that ball. In rounding first base, he almost fell down. <laughs> oh. Think he'd have been upset? Oh, man. Good swing. Hard swing. Right on the ball. And Ryan Thompson unable to chase that baby down. Goes all the way to the wall, and Quest goes on second base with a double. The kind of day he was having. It's surprising that... Ryan Thompson didn't leap up and snag it. One down, a runner at second. McGriff takes ball one. In field deep, as it should be. Fred McGriff from Tampa, Florida. Played high school ball against Dwight Good. 296. 10 home runs, 24 RBIs for McGriff. Gazzo gets the call, one and one. The two important people for the Braves on the disabled list. Chipper Jones, who we talked about earlier, who's going to be out most of this year. And Jeff Blauser, who has been their regular shortstop. Ball fouled off to the left side, one and two. 
Lauser, a big part of their success last year, hit 305. Drove in 73 runs as a shortstop. Also hit 15 homers. I think McGriff can hit some long home runs. The home runs, when they're hit a long way in Toronto now, they're referred to as McGriffian shots. Gonzo throws a great off-speed pitch, and he gets McGriff. A second strikeout. Excuse me, Russell. McGriff started his career up there in Toronto in the Major League. Signed by the Yankees originally. Here's that last pitch. Guys will really change his speed so very well off the fastball and the breaking ball. And he hits the corner of the plate with that breaking ball. Good pitch from Mauro Gaza. Uh, okay. The game we, is official the now. The game counts. That's right. Fred Wolfpump bringing the, the brownies. brownies are in. Mm. Let's be on a diet and look at those brownies all the time. David Justice at the plate. He doesn't have to worry about the brownies. He's got to worry about Gazzo. Ball one. Justice grounded to Segui his first time up. Top of the fourth. Mets ahead by three. Two down on a runner in scoring position. Two balls, no strikes. bit of exasperation on falling behind 2-0. and oh. Gonzo a little frustrated on the mound then. Line drive. A little trouble with it, but Thompson's speed is a factor, and he comes and gets that. That will end it. The double by Klesko. He is stranded in the top of the fourth on a Modell scoreboard after three and a half innings. Mets lead three to nothing. Kids, the Mets said nobody beats the Wiz invites you to be a part of Dynamets Dashes at Shea. Weather permitting, fans age 14 and under can run the bases after tomorrow's 140 Mets Braves game. Future Dynamets Dash dates are June 11th, July 24th, August 7th, and September 3rd. So come out to the ballpark and round the bases just like your Mets heroes. For ticket information or to charge seats by phone, call the Mets ticket office at 718-507-TIXX during business hours. David Segui, who has fly to center in his first at bat, will face John Smoltz for the second time. Bottom of the fifth inning, Mets ahead three to nothing. Ground ball toward the middle, Lemke over, nice move. One down. Would also like to remind you that Mets baseball is brought to you by Chemical Bank. Expect more from us. And Thompson. So Thompson who struck out for the 32nd time his first at bat. We'll give John Smoltz a second go round here. The Mets really need Thompson to come along with curveball strike one. Great physical talent. Swinging it foul straight back. Well, on two. He's always going to labor under the problem of striking out until he corrects it. He does have a lot of talent. That's the curveball, and that'll send him back to the dugout with number 33. We've seen a lot of people over the years. Well, one one guy that comes to mind, Bobby Bonds, had a fine career. He struck out his. I feel hurt. Let him leave. 
Of course, you got to hit 30 dingers to do it. Steal a lot of bases. What did he do? 30, 30, four times, five yeah. times. Quite a talent, Bobby Bonds. On the other hand, Dave Nicholson, years ago, struck out a lot, never stayed in major leagues. That's true. This time, McCraw talking to Ryan Thompson. Angelosi singled and scored the first Mets run in the third. Oh! They got him. So, for the first time this year, John Smoltz hits a batter. I'm going to take a look at that last pitch. Cangelosi trying to get out of the way of the ball. And the ball hit him on the foot. Just nicked him. But in a very sensitive area. Either that or he just got out of active studio. <laughs> Tough to react that quick, I think. Mm -hmm. That's the real McCoy. So the Mets will get a chance to get the pitcher out of the way, as it is stated. Cangelosi at first has to be a little conservative. Two down and the pitcher up. You do not want him to lead off the next inning. Fouled off, strike one. The Mets have played a lot of tight ball games this year. 11 one run games. They are seven and four in those. Gazzo takes a ball, one ball, one strike. Smoltz with three strikeouts and no walks. But in the top of the fifth, pardon me, the bottom of the fourth. Oh, look, Amaro Gazzo slaps it the other way. And another error by a Met player, pardon me, by a Braves player, stayed on the base. My goodness. Cangelosi almost dove by the bag. Pelton doesn't like the call. So the third well, error by an outfield. And Angel Hernandez only had one position. His position was way in front of the bag. If the foot did come off, it was just, he just couldn't see it because of the position he had. You only have a second to to take a position near the bag. Now here's the base hitting the right field. Dave Justice making an error. Now Cangelosi jogging to second base. Luckily he gets around second, heads to third. Here's the slide and the throw in to Pendleton. We'll see, does he take his foot off? Yes, his football. He might have been pushed off. <laughs> Did he get away with it? I guess it's okay. But Bobby Cox, whatever he heard from Angel Hernandez, he's satisfied. Technically, you're not allowed to push the player off the base or any part of the player off the base. Varying calls take place. I remember one time in the in the World Series, there was a play at first. It was obvious the first baseman push the guy off but they called him out those things happen that's why you keep applying those tough bags so this guy Aino and Smoltz will go at it with two down Angelosi at third Gazzo the pitcher at first McGriff playing behind Gazzo Fastball misses, one ball, one strike. Five and three lifetime is John Smoltz against the Mets. Going for his 75th Major League win. Fly ball to right field and Justice is there. So although they had a hit batter and a base hit and an error, the Mets don't score in the bottom of the fourth. After four, on the Modell scoreboard, it's three to nothing Mets. If you think you play like this, but you really play like this, you need help. You need Leslie Nielsen, star of the new home video, Bad Golf Made Easier. Billy, the reason the game is called golf is because all the other four-letter words have been taken. Leslie Nielsen's Bad Golf Made Easier teaches you the fundamentals. Always remember the only really useful tip in golf is the one you get to the start. Secrets the pros won't tell. Never use the comb in the blue fluid. And how to play the problem lie. 
It's the smash hit home video. Call now to order. Leslie Nielsen's bad golf made easier. What is that, Credo? We don't play golf and feel bad. We, we play, play bad, bad golf but feel good. good. Call now to order Leslie Nielsen's Bad Golf Made Easier, only $19.98. This video makes the perfect gift. Rush delivery available. Call 1-800-624-5885. Show your colors with the Mets MasterCard from Chemical Bank. If you have one, use it. If not, call 1-800-233-METS to apply. Sports Channel. Bobby Bonilla leads the Mets when they hit the field against the Florida Marlins at Shea. The Mets battle the Marlins. Monday and Wednesday at 7.30. Mets on deck at 7.15. Live and exclusive on Sports Channel. <laughs> Mets ahead 3 to nothing. Top of the fifth inning. Mark Lemke will eventually lead it off here. Mauro Gazzo has had a complete turnabout in control last time out. He walked a bundle. So far today, two strikeouts, no walks, and he has used the breaking ball extremely well. He's a Texas fan. Bright red colors. Lemke doubled to left his first time up. Now, John Cangelosi a little closer to the line and a little bit in. Ball fouled off. Strike one. Thompson's the one outfielder with the Mets that does challenge in the outfield. He plays a relatively shallow center field, and boy, can he pull back and get him. You see the weak swings that Lemke takes sometimes. It's those flares to left that usually fall in. That's why the opposite fielder normally challenges a small hitter. He's the real blue collar ball player in this club. They have a lot of marquee names on this Atlanta Brave club, but this guy gets the job done day after day. A ball and two strikes. Make it two and two. Lemke, as does Justice, the only two players in the lineup today with more walks than strikeouts. That is a rarity in the game now. Fouled off, still two and two. You would kind of expect that from Mark Lemke, but Dave Justice would be a big surprise. So far this year, that's the way it is with Justice. 14 walks, 12 strikeouts. be one of the guidelines on being a good hitter. Tapper this time. So he does have to throw it to Gazzo. But it's a good throw and a good catch and one down. There's Dave Justice. Oh, big swing, long stride, power hitter. Yet he makes contact. Yes, he does. And the Florida Marlins will make contact with the New York Mets on Monday night at 7.30. Don't forget Francis Xavier Healy. Mets on deck at 7.15. Live and exclusive right here on Sports Channel. One down and Charlie O'Brien takes a hack. Fouls it off. Strike one. And a happy fan. It is always a little bit amazing, I guess, for us who have been on the field so long to see how happy people are to get one of those foul balls. I think it's great. I do too. You can tell the excitement. The thing that amazes me is there are certain fans that put up their hand and stop a line, catch a line drive in their bare hand. Set off the end of the bat. Lots of time for Bonilla. Two down. Saw that pin right there on Bobby Bonilla's hat. That's a Nickelodeon pin. They're going to have a great exhibit. Kids of all ages can enjoy themselves out here at Chase Stadium. The, the Mets and Nickelodeon getting together to put together a park out there behind the right field fence. Gonzo delivers a strike to Belliard. 
Should be a lot of fun here at Shea Stadium. Had a press conference a couple weeks ago. No balls, two strikes, and two down. Gonzo delivers. Oh, and what a jam job. Bonilla's going to have a tough play. Gets rid of it quick, and he gets it. Belliard is out on a nice play by Bobby Bowe. Three up, three down in the top of the fifth. After four and a half on the Modell scoreboard, Mets lead by three. Fans MCI Long Distance is sponsoring a new segment during the Mets on Deck program called Ask Fran. If you have a question you'd like Francis to answer on the air, just send it to Ask Fran, care of Sports Channel, P.O. Box 234, Woodbury, New York, 11797. Look for Fran's response to your question during Mets on Deck prior to each Mets game on Sports Channel. It's got me to be calling in now, Francis. Calling in that question. Now, we, we, if we don't have the answer, we will go to the player who you designate. We'll find out the answer. We'll go to Rusty or we'll go to Ralph. We'll go any place you want to find out the answer. Either that or we'll go to the book. The book's important. Bottom of the fifth. Todd Hundley takes ball one. By the way, tomorrow afternoon here at the ballpark, Nickelodeon character Stimpy and Doug will be roaming the ballpark. Hundley gets jammed and pops it up. The ball will stay in play. Again, the sun, a little bit of a trouble, but not for Fred McGriff. One down. Mention those Nickelodeon characters here at the ballpark tomorrow. They will be roaming the ballpark to promote the summer opening of Nickelodeon, no, Nickelodeon Extreme Baseball at Shea. Doug is no relation, as Jay Horowitz says, to either Mets pitcher Doug Linton or PA announcer Doug Gould. To the best of our knowledge. Only Jay. So it should be a great afternoon tomorrow afternoon here at Chase Stadium. The Mets and the Braves. Arcelak takes a curveball for ball one. Also, I see where Jay Leno of the Tonight Show will be taping at batting practice tomorrow. Yep. Two for two is Arcelak on this game. And Jay Leno during batting practice. Take some segments with a number of the Met players. That's a little air on his show. Line drive to center. Moving to his right. Is Sanders two down. That'll bring up Bobby Bowl. Benia was the recipient of an RBI and a double. And that Faithful inning for Ryan Klesko. Two errors and a slip down and left. And the Mets had three runs. Hard ground ball in the hole. And Bonilla gets hit number two. As Big Hondo giving the rules out. Keep your eye on that pitcher. Look where your outfielders are. It's great. Hondo is absolutely terrific. I don't care if you go down there 2,335 times. He's going to tell you every time, and that's the way it should be. I think he's a great coach. He's very enthusiastic, very positive, and a lot of energy. Line drive. At least a base hit. Benilla goes to third. Fresco comes up and throws to the correct base this time. And he holds Kent to a single. First and third, two down. Leo Mazzoni going out to the mound to talk to John Small, so get some action in the Braves' bullpen. Speaking of pitchers, speaking of bullpens, with Mentioned tonight show to see David Letterman the other night. He had L.A. Dodger pitchers trying to break the lens of the camera in the bullpen at Dodger Stadium. Well, after about 33 tries, I guess they got it. They eh? got it. Shows you so much for control, eh? That is Mill Till warming. He's hoping his control is sharper than that. 
<laughs> especially if he comes in the game. You know, talking about the Braves bullpen, Rusty, uh, for about a year, two years now, we've been reading that they're not that comfortable with their bullpen. They get some pretty good arms in that bullpen. Greg McMichael, Stanton, Rollers, who Mark throws Rollers. it about 96 to 98. A lot of people like to have to suffer through that. Mm. Sagi, ball off the plate. Whoa, Bonilla, they're going to try for him. He's back in, and on the play, Kemp goes to second. So, guys running all over the place. Bobby Bonilla started up the line and then realized he couldn't make it. Charlie O'Brien on the run through the ball to Pendleton. He makes the grab, and Kent safely into second base. Well, I don't know what Leo Mazzoni told him, <laughs> but he didn't tell him that. <laughs> That'll be a wild pitch. Now there's going to be an intentional pass to Segui, and they will try to get Ryan Thompson, who is struggling. Well, good time to come out of that slump. Sagi goes the first, and here comes Thompson. It's one of those times in your life there's not really any reason to look down at third base. It's all in your hands. It's between the hitter and the pitcher. It'll be Thompson against Smoltz. Smoltz has struck him out both times. Infield deep, outfield deep. Foul ball on a curveball. Thompson hit a good swing. Well, they got to throw Ryan Thompson a lot of breaking balls now until he proves he can hit that breaking ball. Carlos Delgado will be right fielder or left fielder with the final Blue Jays struggling with the breaking ball. Anytime a young player comes up into the major leagues and can hammer that fastball, you got to throw him a lot of off-speed pitches. Throws it by Thompson. He had a breaking ball swing at the fastball right there. He was anticipating. Mm -hmm. He was swinging at bat saying, don't go around. <laughs> it was in almost the same spot that the curveball was. Fine pitch by Smoltz. And again, Thompson in the hole, 0 and 2. Last time, Smoltz threw a curveball out of the strike zone that Thompson went for. When you're at the plate with less than two strikes and you're sitting on a breaking ball and off-speed pitch, unless they have just an absolutely poor fastball, if they give it to you, you really can't go after it. You're going to swing the bat just like Ryan did at that last fastball. There it is, but this time he gets a piece and stays alive. Obviously, Benilla at third has to stay alive, especially with this count. The pitcher does not want the hitter to get a good pitch. We've talked about O'Brien's ability to get the ball in the dirt. But sometimes, if it's a shin guard, you got to be ready. Fastball up and in, he says. Don't you be looking out over that plate. Next pitch that Smoltz throws will be his 73rd. And the Mets get four more. will kill you won't oh, it? he crushed that ball <laughs> after he hit that ball halfway to first he looked in and nodded into the dugout probably to Tom McCraw Angelosi's hit in the back and he charges the mound he has smoked both benches emptying out this is not good 
There's no doubt that Smoltz went right at the back of Cangelosi. Now the bullpens are coming. This is what baseball is going to have to stop. This is no good. There's some throws and punches being thrown out here. Brian Thompson all over the place out there. Thompson feeling as though if you're going to hit somebody, hit me. I'm the one that hit it. Benny in the middle of the fray. As Jimmy Williams trying to calm Bonilla down, now it's mostly just pushing and shoving guys trying to stop guys from getting in it. There's Thompson being held by Justice. Well, Smoltz went right after him with the fastball. Cangelosi out there in a heartbeat. He was full tilt at Smoltz. You got to watch those guys in the back of the pack walking around. They got everybody quieted down now, it seems. So about the littlest guy in baseball said, I'm not taking it. How about that? Cangelosi going after Smoltz, who's about 6'3". Well, I think what we should do now is get the trainers to go out, too. Maybe we get the trainers to go out. We'll get the clubhouse guys. They'll all go out there, have a little conversation. Maybe we can set up a barbecue pit. <laughs> Well, Smoltz will probably be ejected from the ball game and Cangelosi. Cangelosi's got to go. Well, Smoltz would have to go also. He threw at him, and Cangelosi went after him. So Smoltz out of the game, Cangelosi, I'm sure, out of the ball game. Well, they haven't done anything yet. They're making that decision well, now. Smoltz is on his way to the dugout. Cangelosi is going to first base, though. Well, uh, I think they have to eject both guys. Well, I, I agree. I, I don't think John's going to gonna make it on the bases. We'll see. I hate to be the umpire who has to tell him he's out of the game. But there was no doubt about it. Smoltz going after Cangelosi. Dallas Green now is going to be told that uh, his player is uh, going to be out of the game. There it is. Yeah, both guys get ejected from the ball game, so that's it for Cangelosi. Well, he didn't hesitate. Well, I'll tell you one thing. That was as blatant as you can get. Yep. Well, you want to see a ball that's smoked. This ball is smoked by Ryan Thompson. It hits the back wall. Pretty much a line shot over that left field fence. Smoltz throwing a hanging hook. The ball going over the wall. Now Ryan Thompson styling down at first base. New and watch. He'll turn into the dugout. Motioning into the dugout. John Smoltz, I'm sure, not happy with that. And what makes him matter is he gave up the grand slam. Now Smoltz goes back to the rubber. Winds up the first pitch after the grand slam. He throws it, John Cangelosi. And if you're going to hit somebody, that's where you go after him. Now Cangelosi out after Smoltz. O'Brien involved, and then the bench is emptied. And a big pile up around the pitcher's mound. Orsalak and Deion Sanders. Now, here, this is the toughest part of this game when you're in the bullpen. You have to run all the way in. Now, look at Ryan Thompson. But luckily, nobody, we, we believe nobody got hurt in this pile up. I don't know what they're going to do to stop this in baseball, but something's going to happen. You don't want somebody injured out there. And there have been some severe injuries. Tommy John, for one years ago, injured in a brawl on the mound. You don't want any severe injuries. Well, we have had a lot of excitement here at Shea Stadium. Errors, grand slam, fights, and this call for the bullpen is sponsored by MCI Long Distance. Back at Shea Stadium, we're now getting Terry Pendleton to take the field. Last year on the play, he walked off the field and went home. Yeah, because the pitcher didn't retaliate after a batter was struck, a Braves batter was struck. Nobody could believe it. He walked right off the field. Milt Hill was the new pitcher. And that is Parker, Rick Parker, running. For Cangelosi. That's the second time in a row Cangelosi was hit. Smoltz hit him in the foot the time before and really got him in the back. 
way outside. Ball one. Al Gazzo, two hits in five at bats so far. He fouls this one off. One ball, one strike. Well, I'll tell you what. Fans have got their money's worth as far as the excitement goes in the game. Mets ahead 7-0, bottom of the fifth. A grand slam home run by Ryan Thompson. Gazzo back through the middle, cut off by Belliard, and a close play oh, at second. Rick Parker almost beat that play. That will end it, but the Mets score four on that grand slam by Thompson on the Sherwin-Williams scoreboard. After five, it's Mets seven. Atlanta nothing. Shea Stadium, top of the sixth inning. On a beautiful sunny day, Met fans are basking in the glow of a 7-0 lead. That is Rick Parker taking over in left field. John Cangelosi and John Smoke ejected after the hit batter and the charging of the mound. Francis, the only way this stuff is going to be settled is if there's severe fines. Yeah, they're going to have to do something before somebody really gets hurt. There have been some injuries. As I mentioned earlier, Tommy John really hurt his shoulder in a fight with Dick McAuliffe years ago, and I'm sure there have been many more. But, uh, I remember Bill Lee in a fight with the Yankees. Oh, had yes. His shoulder separated. His I throwing was in that arm. game. Too bad. I mean, you you, you got to be careful with this. Of course, you can see John Smoltz wind up and drill uh, John Cangelosi also. I understand. Of course, the old-timers say it's part of the game. Little Looper is going to fall in for a base hit. Was not hit that hard. But Tony Tarasco, who was pinch hitting for Hill, just lobbed one in the right. And fans, this... The league leaders are brought to you by a U.S. Postal Service. Stolen bases. There it is, number 15. Sanders leading the National League. I was surprised last year the reaction of the fans in Atlanta to the Sanders-Otis Nixon controversy. They sided with Otis Nixon. It was definite. Ball in the dirt. So Tarasco, another one of the young players of the Atlanta Braves, leads off the sixth with a base hit. No runs now on three hits. Three big Brave errors. Fastball misses 2-0. Two errors in the third, one error in the fourth. The one in the third cost three runs. Popped up, shallow left center. Parker says, I have it, and he does. One down. Well, if you miss him, Ryan Thompson hit a shot for a grand slam here. Ball landed off the blue in the back fence Very in the bullpen. Time before, he was struck out by a curveball. It was out of the strike zone. And that at bat, after two quick strikes, he just got a little piece of a curveball down and away. Smoltz threw up and in to push him off the plate, and then he hung the hook. Fouled off out of play. Strike one. Bases loaded. You get a hanging hook. You hit a shot like that. Got to make some promises to the big guy in the sky. <laughs> Especially when you're struggling with that bat. Fastball misses. One and one. But I mentioned uh, when Ryan Thompson, we, we, we had the camera on Ryan Thompson when he struck out the previous at bat, and he was sitting next to Tom McCraw, and Tom was talking to him. And then when Ryan Thompson hit the grand slam, when he was halfway to first base, he looked into the dugout and nodded at somebody. I'm assuming it was Tom McCraw. I agree. One and one. One out. Line drive to left, Parker over, and he snags it. So Pendleton hit a rope, but Parker was there. Two down. Field, 
And that will bring up one of the pivotal players in this game, Ryan Klesko. I don't think I've ever seen an outfielder struggle more on three separate plays than Klesko in the third inning. And then he came up in, in the bottom of, or the top of the fourth and hit a bullet for a double. Right over Ryan Thompson's head in center field. Time is called. Sagi cleaning it up a little bit around first. He also wanted to tell Mauro Gazzo he was going to play behind the runner. Off speed pitch misses ball one. First baseman has to let that pitcher know, obviously. High pop up. This is a major league pop up. Bonilla says, I'm going to take it. Oh, and he does do it. It's a thrilling day out there with these high flies, ladies and gentlemen. When it goes up like that, you hear it say, oh, my word, there's another one. You'll know. Braves are out in the sixth. After five and a half on the Modell scoreboard, 7 of the Mets. A new pitcher for the Atlanta Braves, Mike Bilecki on the mound. There's the stats, 4.05 ERA, no saves. And the rest of his story, we're talking about the Braves' bullpen. Stanton did the job last year. McMichael did the job last year. Volers does the job. Tough to get a roll age relief winner out of that bullpen because they're able to use so many guys to save games. Piscaino will lead off the bottom of the sixth. Seven to nothing, New York. Grand slam home run by Ryan Thompson. The big blow in this ball game. By lucky misses with the first pitch, ball one. Last night, Ryan Thompson struck out three times in the game. Twice in this game. And then a grand slam. That's a good way to come out of a slump. That will get their attention. Fouled off, out of play. One ball, one strike. Fans, Mets baseball is brought to you by your local Subaru dealer, who invites you to test drive an all-wheel drive Subaru today. Ryan's in the dugout now. Now, Tom McCraw was doing the talking last time we shot it. <laughs> Ryan's doing the talking now. What a difference in a bat makes. You could see Tom McCraw talking to Ryan Thompson before, and Ryan looking out, in the, out into the field almost so mad he didn't want to listen. Now he's doing the talking. He's also looking at that hand a little bit. Strike three called by Lecky. He gets this guy in on. To remember that Ryan Thompson has that injury to his wrist. Probably has come back as quick as anybody ever expected from that injury. Now he was out in the the pileup. You wonder if he might have re-injured that hand in the pileup. I don't know. Hundley the hitter. Ground ball up the middle. Lemke had him played so far to the right side, you can tell the Braves are going to just try to jam, jam, jam Hundley. So he inside out of him and got a base hit. So Todd Hundley picking up a base hit. He reached on an error in the third inning, hit a high fly ball left field. He's been swinging maybe a little bit too hard in today's game, and there he picks up a base hit into center field. And will bring up Orsalak, who has singled in the first, Singled and drove in a run in the third and hit a line drive to the center field of Sanders. Fastball misses, ball one. Mets with three in the third and four in the fifth. Mauro Gazzo has been in total control. Quick throw. They get Hundley at first base. Good quick release from O'Brien. We've seen that here in the past. Yeah, we've seen it a lot here. Chase Dane, a quick release from Charlie O'Brien. There he gets Todd Hundley way off first base. Hundley saying something to Eric Gregg. Well, we'll take a look at that play. Now, look at how quickly O'Brien gets it to first base. That's a good strong throw. Ball beats Hundley to first base. And the sweep tag. 
Called out by Eric Gregg. So nobody on, two down, and Orsalak has a two ball and one strike count. Little soft liner, but Justice is there. I'll end this inning very quickly. After six innings, on the Modell scoreboard, 7 nothing Mets. At Big Shea, it's 7 nothing Mets. Travel arranged through U.S. Air with daily nonstop jet flights every business day from Newark to Washington. U.S. Air begins with you. On a beautiful, warm, bluebird day here at Shea Stadium. Lots of youngsters out here today. Enjoying the Mets lead. Fred McGriff will lead it off for the Atlanta Braves. McGriff is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Mauro Gazzo. Two strikeouts, no walks. He's given up three hits. And he fools McGriff for strike one. That is Fernando Vina at third base now for New York. McGriff takes that one, a ball and a strike. Gazzo misses for the second time. Two and one. McGriff will be followed by Justice and Lemke. So far, a chopper right at Kent. One down. Jeff Kent has turned some critical eyes in a different direction with the play he has had at second base. He has made a lot of really incredible plays this year, but the big thing is that he's been making the consistent plays. He's worked hard. Well, the talk in spring training was to move Kent to third base, Bobby Benilla to the outfield, and ironically, both Bobby Benilla and Jeff Kent doing a job defensively. A lot of people feel with Jeremy Burnett's not here that it might be in the Mets' best interest to do just that. Kent says, I'll feel this one. Shut up, Stog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jeff Kent has been doing a fine job. Why mess with something when it's not broken? Understood. We're watching Mauro Gazzo pitch today. He's on the corners, changing speeds. I think the thing they're looking at is Fernando Vina. Chance to put him at second base, get his speed, get his electricity in the lineup. He had a great spring training. Mark Lemke will hit with two down. Into left center. Ryan Thompson can't get there. So at least a double for Lemke. And he will hold there at second. That is his second double in this ball game. Well, we talked about Lemke before. All he does is be consistent. Year in and year out, defensively. Offensively, he finds a way to get on base. Postseason play, does the job. And we mentioned all those marquee names on this ball club. Sometimes he's lost in the shuffle. And to bring up Charlie O'Brien. Made one heck of a play to pick off his counterpart, Todd Hundley. Line shot, hooking, foul. So O'Brien, 0 for 2, trying to penetrate the system here with the Mets, get a run on the scoreboard for Atlanta. Hey, there are a couple of characters. Must be those Nickelodeon characters, eh? Well, tomorrow they're supposed to be here, roaming the stands. <laughs> All right. He must have heard you. 
No balls and a strike. Two down. Lemke at second. Gazzo hoping to get out of this mini jam. He has yet to give up a run. Back to back five performances by Gazzo in the starting role. Swing and a miss, and O'Brien goes to one and two. Line drive to center. This might be the end of the shutout, and it will be. Here comes Lemke to score. O'Brien gets an RBI. 7-1. Our Greg Pavlik now will come out of the Mets dugout to talk to Mauro Gazzo. Gazzo has registered 74 pitches so far today. Changing speeds very well. Now we're going to get some action in the Met bullpen. Buck Linton will start throwing. Charlie O'Brien hitting the ball towards the end of the bat, placing the ball safely into center field. Two strikes. He protected the plate. And those runners in scoring position. Used to be one of the cardinal rules to just get the ball in play. Nowadays, it's a little frustrating when you're disciplined as much as I try to and talked a lot about hitting my whole career when you see guys swinging like it was 2 0 instead of 0 2. Mm -hmm. Belliard drops one down, but it's a foul, strike one. It's not a bad idea right there if he gets that ball in fair territory. Fernando Vena was a was not playing in for Belliard. As Vena. No balls in the strike to Belliard. Two outs, top of the seven. Line drive. It's a fair ball. And have to get this one in a hurry. Charlie O'Brien, they're going to hold him up. He's not going to get there. He weighed anchor about 20 feet from third. <laughs> get off the catchers. <laughs> I could talk about it. I weighed anchor many times. Charlie said third base is far enough. Thank you. <laughs> Let me catch my breath. Oh. So Gazzo. Now with runners on second and third, two down. One run into the seventh, and Linton is heating up quickly. A pinch hitter will come to the plate, Bill Pakoda. See Pakoda, that 294 average, no home runs, one RBI. Former New York Mets player. So, ball one. Well, the Braves must have liked the talent the Mets had. Dallas Green is coming out. They're going to make a change right now. But the Braves must have liked the talent the Mets have or had because they got Dakota, Gallagher, O'Brien. And, I mean, this is a solid ball club picking up those players from the Mets after the Mets had them for a couple seasons. Now Dallas Green is going to the bullpen. That'll be all for Mauro Gazzo. He stands to win this ball game if the bullpen can hold the Braves. Well, as Doug Litton comes in, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. So Mauro Gazzo out of the ball game, but he has a chance of picking up his second victory of the season if Doug Linton can hold the lead. He's on a relief of Gazzo. There are his stats. 4-0, 2.45 ERA. No saves. Struck out nine and 14 and two-third innings. He's been in 12 ball games. 
And the Mets right now in front of the Braves, seven to one, but the Braves with runners on second and third with two men out. Bill Pakoda sent up as a pinch hitter. We'll face Doug Linton. Dakota, a pretty versatile infielder, can play just about anywhere. Linton misses 2 0. With the hit of once to be in this situation. Runners in scoring position, two balls, no strikes. Whitten gets the outside corner. Two and one. Line drive to center. Two more runs to score. And so the pinch hitters for the Braves have been doing some job this afternoon. Base hit in two RBIs for Pakoda. That'll bring up Deion Sanders. Pen is still active. Roger Mason throwing. The Braves obviously will also have a new pitcher. Ball inside to Sanders. Sanders going 0 for 3 so far is average down to 302. There goes the runner. Ground ball in the hole. Good play by this guy in a long throw. No chance. Sanders too much speed and an infield base hit. The fifth in a row for the Braves. It's a good play by Jose Viscano to just glove this ball. Now he knows in his heart he's not going to get Sanders at first base. In fact, I don't believe there's a shortstop in baseball gets Three Sanders in that ball. I agree. So runners at first and second, still two down, three runs in in the top of the seventh. In the on-deck circle, Ryan Klesko, who's had some rough evening, he represents, if he gets to the plate, the tying run. Swing and a miss at an off-speed pitch. Pendleton stretches his back out. We talked about the year Pendleton won the MVP award in the National League. Kind of a controversial year for voting. A lot of people felt Barry Bonds should have won the award. But Pendleton had a fine season. Yes, he did. Open stance. Stays away from the plate and goes in. Strike two. They, they knew he could play third base in St. Louis. They didn't know he had as much power as he has shown in Atlanta. Of course, different ballparks. Very much so. 17 home runs and 84 RBIs in 93 for Pendleton. He got off to a very slow start. Swing and a miss, and Linton strikes him out. Pardon me, foul ball. Got a little piece of it, and that counts. So still 0-2. He was just staying alive like that for Ryan Thompson before he hit the grand slam. Waste the pitch outside. A ball and two strikes.
Pendleton waiting on Linton. Not any longer. This time he did not make any contact. Hundley throws the first and they strike him out again. First strikeout for Linton. Three runs in the top of the seventh for the Atlanta Braves after six and a half on the Modell scoreboard. 7-3 Mets. Well, Stimpy and Doug are here today. They are roaming the stands. And a new pitcher for the Braves, Francis, Steve Bedrosian. Steve Bedrosian coming in to take on the Mets. See his stats, 3.55 ERA. Finds himself more in a middleman role here with the Braves. 11 games, 12 strikeouts, 12 and two-third innings. They get some real good arms coming out of that bullpen for the Braves. Nice story done by CNN on his son Cody. Cody threw out the first ball last week in Atlanta. Son fighting and beating cancer. So congratulations to Cody, and I'm sure his dad very, very proud of him. I'm sure he is. That will be a lifetime battle. Bedrock, as he is called, facing the Mets. Mets ahead 7-3, bottom of the seventh inning. After this series, the Florida Marlins come in the shade. Dumped down the third baseline is Vanian. He's got another hit. That's the fifth bun hit of the season for Vanian. Electricity in motion. A lot of people say that he reminds them of Wally Backman. Wally a catalyst for a few years with the Mets. And Vane is certainly a catalyst when he's playing. So the leadoff man on, it brings up Jeff Kent. Kent one for three, singled and scored in the fifth. Quick throw. The series in St. Louis. The Mets had only had two stolen bases up to that time. Then you got a chance to play. He stole two in his own to double it. <laughs> so they're keeping an eye on him. Kent, go oh, double play written all over this. Four, six, three. And the Braves have turned to double play. Vania and Kent back to the dugout, and Segui will hit. He's 0 for 2 with a walk, an intentional walk in this game. He scored the Mets' sixth run. Mets had three in the third, four in the fifth. The Braves with three in the top of the seventh. Ten hits today for the Mets. Eight for Atlanta. Segui takes strike one. Petrosian, when he first came up, was one of the hardest throwers in baseball. Now he has to use that pitch a little more often, the off-speed pitch. Not many hard throwers have made that adjustment to becoming a finesse pitcher. One guy that comes to mind is the man who pitched for the Mets, Mike Cunningham. Yep. out by Dallas Green to face Steve Avery. Start that Marlins series. Saberhagen will go for his fifth win. Fly ball to right, fairly deep. Drifting back is Justice at the wall. Home run! David Segui hits number six, and the Mets lead 8-3. Bring up the 
guy who hit the grand slam home run in this game, Ryan Thompson. Sagi back to back nights with home runs, or I should say, a night followed by day. Ball one to Thompson. Jammed, and I think he got the bat. Well, he finally come out of that slump with a grand slam, smoked the ball over the left field wall, and his favorite bat was just broken. Well, we should save that one. Put that in the trophy case. Grand slam. And we'll see David Segui going over the right field wall. He got a fastball, hands back in a hitting position, gets the head of the bat out there. Looked like the ball still got in on him a little bit, but strong enough to hit the home run. David Segui, number six on the year. Talked about the Viscaino trade. How about the David Segui trade? Both trades dramatically affecting the Mets in a positive way. A ball and two strikes to Thompson. And boy, he gets jammed. A little pop up to the second baseman. And we'll end the inning. Mets with two hits and one run on the Sherwin Williams scoreboard after seven. Mets eight, Braves three. Clesco trying to bunt for a base hit. Fouls the first pitch off here in the top of the eighth inning. It's 8-3. 11 hits for the Mets. Eight for the Braves. Three big errors for the Braves. And Ryan Clesco, the batter. Clesco batting 326 right now. He takes down an in from Doug Linton. Ryan Clesco, big prospect with the Atlanta Braves. Is one for three. He doubled in the fourth inning. Takes a big swing like Fred McGriff. Takes that pitch off the plate. Two and one. Linton is tied for first in the National League in winning percentage with his 4-0 record. He's the first Mets pitcher to begin a season with four straight wins since John Franco won six straight back in 92. Doug Linton trying to hold these Braves off so Mauro Gazzo can pick up his second victory of the season. And there's a drive to deep right field. That ball is out of here. Home run, Ryan Klesko. He can hammer. Let's Klus go with the home run. It's now 8-4 Mets. Mention his ability to hit the ball out. Big swing like this guy right here, Fred McGriff. McGriff, a home run in last night's ballgame. He's 0 for 3 this afternoon. Hits the ball to the right side, and it takes a bad hop. Gets by Segui. Right now, if this was a basketball game, Dallas Green would call timeout. Error given on the play. Be one of those 20-second jobs. Say, gentlemen, let's get our act together. That's right. Dallas Green looking on. And Dave Justice is over for 3. Will be the batter. Justice with four home runs this season, 10 RBIs. He can smoke them. Well, they have some thunder in the Brave lineup. And it's a strike to Dave Justice. Bobby Bonilla left the ball game due to an upset stomach this afternoon. We get a note from Jay Horowitz. And the 0 1 pitch is down low to Justice. One ball and one strike. Nice crowd on hand on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. Roger Mason continues to throw in the Met bullpen. 
expecting more beautiful weather tomorrow afternoon. These same two teams will go at it here at Shea. Downloaded just as two and one. Tickets still available for tomorrow afternoon's game. Should be a good one. Steve Avery on the mound for the Braves. He'll be opposed by Eric Hillman. Then the Marlins come to town for three, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights. Two one pitch. Foul off, two and two. Justice married to Halle Berry, a fine actress. There have been some celebrated marriages over the years, baseball players to actresses. Foul out of play, we'll do it again at two and two. Of course, probably the most celebrated, Joe DiMaggio and Marilyn Monroe. Very much so. Joe sent flowers to her grave for a long time. Mm -hmm. Leo DeRocher, Lorraine Day. 2 2 pitch. Ball hit in the gap, left center field. And cut off by Parker as Griff goes to second base. Now the Braves have runners on first and second with nobody out. Eight to four ball game. Dallas Green out of the Med dugout. He's got Roger Mason throwing in the Met bullpen, and he's going to have Roger Mason on the mound. He's signaled for Mason to come into this ball game. So that'll do it for Doug Linton. As Roger Mason makes his way into this ball game, we'll make our way out. We'll be back in just a few moments. Roger Mason, the new pitcher for New York. See the score eight to four. Mason, a two and one record, a 2.87 earned run average. He does not have a save. In game number 11, in 15 and two thirds innings, he has given up 12 hits, walked and struck out eight apiece. So big Roger, when he gets through his warm up tosses. John Franco starting to throw in the Met bullpen. Eric Hillman, who are pitching tomorrow afternoon's ball game. Feeling fine. Struggle with a little bit of an inner ear infection. Felt a little dizzy. It's like he's a little dizzy right there the way he's rubbing yes, his head. <laughs> he did. Whoop. So Eric will tow the rubber tomorrow against the Braves. He'll be opposed by Steve Avery. Plenty of tickets still available for tomorrow afternoon's game here at Shea. Come on out, get some sun. Watch the Mets take on the Braves in the final game of this three-game series. Mets trying to wrap up this baby here this afternoon. 8-4, the Mets on top of the Braves. We are in the top of the eighth inning. Nobody out. Runners on first and second. And Mark Linke, the batter. Save situation for Mason. Mets need a double play right here. There's a high fly ball, deep right field. Orslak going back. He's at the wall and makes the grab. The drift tags up, goes to third. Justice retreats to first. One out, and it was a long one. see Orselak back on the warning track. He's got it in his eyesight. It's good to have that fence that gives. So the Mets in double play depth. Runners on the corners. One man gone. A good double play man at the plate if they can get Charlie O'Brien to hit the ball on the ground. His last at bat, he got a hit into center field driving in a run. He also scored a run. He's one for three this afternoon. Takes the ball hard, but foul. Charlie O'Brien does a fine job in his role as a backup player. He's in a great position now. Javier Lopez, a fine young catcher, will do the bulk of the catching. Charlie does catch John Smoltz. Hey. 
Charlie O'Brien, a fine defensive catcher with a good throwing arm. Picked Todd Hundley off first base today. There's McGriff leading off third, Justice off first. Fly ball down the right field line, curbing foul. See those glasses Joe Orslack has on? You don't have to flip those down. A lot of players are going to those glasses. San Diego's Tony Quinn, I believe, owns a part of the company. Swing on a missed strike three. Good fastball from Mason, striking out Charlie O'Brien. Let's take a look at that pitch. On the outside, in fact, just off the plate. It's O'Brien to go for it. Big out. Two-minute gone. Yes. The batter, Javier Lopez, batting 293, six home runs, 20 RBIs. He's only a baby. He's a rookie. Much heralded rookie also. Good, strong throwing arm, good catcher. Fastball down and in. 1-0. Just tuned in. It's Modell's Mega Mug Day here at Shea. Nice crowd on hand on a beautiful afternoon. Mets winning by four. Ground ball to third. Vigna goes for the fourth and second. That'll do it for the Braves here in the eighth. They pick up one. Strand two. We played seven and a half. And on the Modell scoreboard, it's 8-4 New York. Kids, here's your chance to dress like your favorite Mets player. Come out for the 140 Mets Braves game on Sunday, May 15th, and get a white pinstripe t-shirt with the Mets logo courtesy of Khan's Hot Dogs. And you'll be dressed for the post-game Dynamets Dash when kids can run the bases in Shea just like the major leaguers. For ticket information or charge seats by phone, call the Mets ticket office at 718-507-TIXX during business hours or visit the Mets clubhouse shops. A per ticket surcharge applies. Well, that young lady right there is calling all friends to remind them to start their Memorial Day weekend at Shea Stadium. Friday, May 27th will be the first of three spectacular fireworks shows this season. A dazzling show will follow the 740 Mets game against the Reds. Brought to you by Coca-Cola and the world-famous Fucci family. For ticket information or to charge seats by phone, call the Mets ticket office at 718-507-TIXX. During business hours, a per-ticket surcharge applies. A lot of special days here at Shea Stadium, and today is a special day. It's Modell's Mega Mug Day. I thought the young lady might be calling in to participate in the Ask Fran contest. Like I said, all they have to do is ask a question. We will go out. We will find out the answer as Rick Parker steps in and takes a ball from Steve Bedrosian. If they want their favorite Met to answer a question, just send it in, and we will go out we will find out that answer if you have Mr. Staub on your mind we'll find out the answer from Mr. Staub get his favorite recipes 2-0 and on Fernando Vena ground ball to third Pendleton to McGriff one down Rick Parker grounding out to Terry Pendleton Folks, day in and day out, at home or on the road, you can always count on the great taste of Bud Light. It won't fill you up and it never lets you down, so make it a Bud Light. McKnight will be the pinch hitter. So McKnight pinch hitting for Roger Mason. Trojan's first pitch is a called strike. John Franco will come in to pitch ninth inning for the Mets. One and one. Franco in to talk to the manager, Dallas Green, about the way he's been used. He will not be in a save situation. But he has not been used a lot. Dallas said he didn't want to wear him out. 
Two one pitch to McKnight. Ground ball to the right side. Lemke to McGriff. Two down. Well, John Franco come in this ball game. He has eight saves on the season. But he wants some action. He's going to get it. And stepping to the plate now for the Mets, Jose Vizcaino. He's 0 for 4 this afternoon. and one on Vizcaino. He hits the ball right up the middle, picking up a base hit. So Vizcaino on first base with his first hit of the game and the 12th hit of the game to the Mets. It's been a good ball game. If you've missed the action, we've had a lot of excitement, a lot of runs scored. Eight for the Mets, four for the Braves, a lot of hits. 22 hits in the game. There have been some exciting misplays defensively. A lot of fighting the sun by outfielders and infielders. Speaking of fighting, there was a bench clearing brawl. John Smoltz hitting John Cangelosi after Ryan Thompson hit a grand slam in the fifth inning. Well, that'll be the new thing. He smoltzed him. <laughs> Angelosi was hit by Smoltz in the foot, the first or the second at bat he had. He had singled in his first A.B., then he drilled him big time. Todd Hundley with a big rip. 0-1 oh, in the mid catcher with two men gone here in the eighth. Obviously trying to pitch Huntley inside, as Rusty mentioned earlier. You can see that's the setup. Huntley has gotten up on top of the plate. I think it's a great move on his part. And I think part of the reason why he's had the success he's had this year is to stand a little too far away from that dish to handle everything. Yeah. George checks this guy in with first base. Todd has hit the ball well this season. Sometimes when you're hitting the ball well and hitting home runs, you start to then try to hit the ball too hard, over swing a little bit. Drogian going to first base again. Huntley went for four this afternoon. Struck out, reached on an error, popped out, and a single to center field. Good pitch from Bedrosian off speed. So they're giving Todd Hundley off speed pitches away and busting him in with the fastball. A one and two on Todd Hundley. Hundley saying, I think I need a new bat. They took his word for it. The home plate umpire Terry Tate did not take a look at the bat. That's great when you have that type of credibility. We tell you there are 28,974 people here today. We're accurate. We've just announced. Nice crowd on hand for this Saturday afternoon game. A Van Gogh type day. Picture perfect. You check this guy in again. It's a good situation for this guy in to take off. If they would get him. So Huntley starts the next inning. That's a hoping that there will be no next inning. One two pitch. Off the plate outside. Two and two. As you can see. Mark Lemke playing way over in the hole. I mean way over. They're giving the entire middle of the field up to Hundley. Once again to first base, Petrosian goes. If nothing else should tell a hitter how they're going to pitch him, it's the way the Braves are playing defensively. 2-2 pitch, Escano breaks, and there's a shot down the right field line. 
Extra bases for Hundley. And this will be a big run. This guy, you know, scoring the ninth run of the game. So Todd Hundley with his second hit of the game, driving in a run. He didn't have much room to put it down that right field line. As Rusty mentioned, Limpke was almost backing up McGriff. I'll tell you what, that's that's really good hitting. Pedrosian, Pedrosian got it down too much. Watch him go down and get it. Right down the line, hooking. Go into that corner. I'll tell you, this guy, Eno, got a great jump. And Joe Orselak takes ball one from Steve Pedrosian. It's now nine to four. Big run as far as that grand slam is concerned. Those insurance runs. Down and in, 2-0. That's the one area that the Mets really lacked in last year. They got a lead. They really didn't add to it much. This year, they have been fighting and scratching and doing all kinds of things late in the game. There's a strike. And you know, you hear it on the streets from baseball fans. That's what they talk about, how the Mets have been scrapping and fighting. Last year, if, if the game was close and the Mets fell behind, it was history. Big statement now is they're fun to watch. 2-1 pitch. There's a line drive base in right field. Henley will score. Orsalap will go for two. And he'll be in the second base with a stand-up double. 10 for New York. Well, not every day is a good day, Bobby. And he's going to make a change. Asking for the right-hander. They're bringing Mark Wallers. Bobby Cox walking out to the mound. Walking a lot better this year. Well, he really struggled with the legs last year, but Bobby's in tip-top shape this year. Old Yankee coach used to throw a lot of extra batting practice. And here comes Mark Wallers, hard-throwing right-hander. He's been timed at 100 miles an hour. And where is he from, Francis? Some a little town there in western Massachusetts called Holyoke, Massachusetts. So Mark Waller is on in relief. Mets have a six-run lead here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Dallas Green looking at the lineup card. And we'll be back. There's a future Colorado silver bullet. A young lady wants to play some baseball. She's got her Met hat on. How about that? Staying out of the sun. Good idea. Well, you and I know that. <laughs> nice crowd on hand on just an absolutely gorgeous afternoon for a ball. Absolutely gorgeous afternoon here in New York. I always liked it when you and I would be someplace and people would say, you know, it's really sunny. It's a nice day for a suntan. <laughs> I said, excuse me, could you check that again? No sun. Francis and I don't hit a lot of the beaches in the National League. No. We hit a lot of restaurants. And rightly so. And Mark Waller's taking his warm-up tosses. He's been timed at getting a ball up to the plate 100 miles an hour. Was a standout baseball player for Holyoke High School in Holyoke, Mass. A lot of Braves. Tom Glavin from the state of Massachusetts. Steve Pedrosian from Massachusetts. So Fernando Vena will hit with Joe Orsalak on second base. Mets have a six-run lead, 10 to 4. 14 hits for the Mets, 10 for the Braves. Tomorrow afternoon, Steve Avery will tow the rubber for the Braves. He'll be opposed by the big guy, Eric Hillman. Two men are gone. Pena takes outside ball one. Oh. 
And a 1 0 pitch. Down low. 2 uh, 3 0. You know, we talk a lot about good days and bad days for umpires. Terry Tate has done a magnificent job. It's almost like he hasn't been at the ballpark today. And he has done a fine job behind home plate. There's a line drive base hit in the left field. Orsalak is being sent around. Cusco up at the ball. Orsalak scores. They get Vena hung up between first and second. And they will get him in the rundown. Terry Pendleton applying a tag. But the Mets pick up another run. We played eight here at Shea Stadium. We go into the top of the ninth. The Mets out in front. 11-4 on the Modell scoreboard. background music about New Orleans for my colleague Mr. Staub made his name way down yonder in New Orleans New Orleans we pronounce New Orleans up here I know <laughs> there's the score 11-4 Mets on top of the Braves 10 hits for the Braves 15 for the Mets and a new pitcher Mr. Stolp thank you John Franco 0-2 with a 3.24 earned run average. He does have eight saves. 16th game for John in 16 and two thirds innings. He has given up 12 hits, walked nine, and struck out 16. This is not a save situation for Franco. And a Modell's hat, it was Modell's day here at Shea. Modell's Mega Mug Day. Gotta go to Mo, says Mitchell and Michael Modell. All the youngsters getting those mugs, some hats. On a beautiful afternoon here at Shea. John Franklin completing his one of tosses and I want to pass congratulations along to Roland Dratch on his engagement to Barry Best. Roland is our AD back in Floral Park today, so congratulations to the big fella. Go get him, Roland. It's a cute way he became engaged, I understand. Uh, his Fiance is a school teacher in the New York area, and it's one of those days where you can bring people in to answer questions from the class. And Roland was brought to the class, and the kids asked the questions. Roland answered them. He said, "I have one more question." He turned to his fiance and said, "Will you marry me?" She said, "I'll get back to you." <laughs> Not, she said, "Yes." Top of the ninth inning. Dave Gallagher, another former Met in the ball game today. His first at bat, 1-0 on Dave. Swung out and missed, 1-1. One one. Gallagher used to be a regular on Dynamets here on Sports Channel, or production, or joint production between the Mets and Sports Channel. 1-2. Great program for youngsters. All about baseball. Catch it every Saturday right here on Sports Channel. One-two pitch. Hard hit ball. Vinya knocks it down. Tupper, one down. They tell you to stay with it and jump on it. That's exactly what Nanovania is going to do here. Blocked it, jumped on it, and got it to first. So one man gone, 11-4, Mets on top of the Braves, and the batter now will be Deion Sanders. Sanders, one for four, had an infield hit his last time up. Hit a ball in the hole, this guy, you know, gloved it. Sanders beat the throw to first. He takes a strike on a breaking ball, 0-1. Mets win this game, they'll be three and a half behind the Braves. Curveball, ground ball is short. Discaino should get him this time, and he does. He knew he didn't have much time to waste. That's one thing that Deion Sanders can do is get down that line. So last chance for the Braves here in the top of the ninth inning with two men gone. The batter will be Terry Pendleton. Pendleton, as the graphic tells you, 0 for 4. Popped out. 
Slide out the center, lined out the left, and struck out. Takes down low, ball one. Braves need base runners. They need a lot of base runners. He showed bunt, but Vania staying very deep at third. 2-0. and oh. He's taking a strike. This is a good outing for Franco. Even though the game's not on the line, it gives him a chance to work a little bit on his pitches when the game is not on the line. He struggled a little bit with his control. Gets a chance to throw some curveballs. It's a pitch he has not used enough. Three and one now in Pendleton. Three and two. Let's not forget the shuffle the kick from New Britain, Connecticut. Mauro Gaza. Terrific job. One more out, and he's got his second win. Round ball to third. Danger knocks it down. The throw across the infield in time. And Connecticut is happy. So Mauro Gazzo getting his second victory, and so is Dallas Green. He's happy. Mets winning this ball game. Taking the Braves 11 4 here on a Saturday afternoon. 15 hits in this game for the Mets, 10 for the Braves. There's the final line score right there. Once again, Mauro Gazzo, his second victory since joining the Mets, and we'll be back. The Devils, the Rangers, the two best teams in the East collide. Only one will survive on the road to the Stanley Cup Finals. The Devils and Rangers clash in Game 3, Thursday, live and exclusive on Sports Channel. Well, there's the final score here at Shea Stadium. The Mets on top of the Braves, 11-4. 15 hits for the Mets, 10 for the Braves. Three errors in the game committed by the Braves, one by the New York Mets. Good ball game here at Shea Stadium. We mentioned a gorgeous afternoon and it absolutely beautiful day here at Shea Stadium. If you're a Mets fan, you have to be elated. Mauro Gazzo picking up his second victory since joining the Mets. Ryan Thompson smoking a ball over the left field wall. Well, those were the two biggest plays in the game, or the two biggest, biggest players in the game, but a lot of people contribute. A lot of insurance runs at the end of the ball game. Uh, the bullpen faltered a little bit, but then uh, everybody kind of got it together and and held the Braves off, uh, especially after uh, the first loss of the series against the team you have to beat to get up there. You know, if you lose games against the teams in your own division, they're more meaningful than when you lose them somewhere else because uh, they mean more. It's just that simple. And the Mets coming back and winning this ball game demonstratively against a very good pitcher, John Smoltz. Uh, and I'll tell you what, they had a lot of things in this game, but the most important thing is our player of the game, and that's Mauro Gazzo. Now, Mauro Gazzo, two great performances in a row for the New York Mets. Got his second victory. Didn't walk a soul today. Struck out two. Six and two-thirds innings for his second win. He's our GMC player of the game, and we'll be back. Welcome back to Shea Stadium where it's been all Mets on this Saturday afternoon. Keep in mind, tomorrow afternoon, the final game of this three-game series, Steve Avery against Eric Gilman, and then the Marlins come to town for three-game series. But the story here at Shea Stadium, home runs, good pitching, couple errors. Yeah. Key errors. Ryan Klesko had a rough day out in left field, especially in the third. It wound up costing them a number of runs, but the big play in this ball game. And that's our Budweiser play of the game is going to be a home run by Ryan Thompson. And not just a normal home run, a grand slam. You see the curveball out over the plate. He hits it all the way, a little short hop off the back fence. My word. And a very happy Ryan Thompson. Holt uh, Smoltz had struck him out twice before that. He made him pay. He's our Bud play of the game. And we'll be back. Uh, 
Well, there's the line score from today's game at Shea Stadium. Mets 11, Braves 4. Stay tuned for Extra Inning. We'll be right back. This has been a presentation of Sports Channel, a tradition of excellence and innovation in regional sports television. This week on Sports Channel, Bobby Bonilla leads the Mets when they hit the field against the Florida Marlins at Shea. The Mets battle the Marlins Monday and Wednesday at 7.30. Mets on deck at 7.15. Live and exclusive on Sports Channel. Promotional considerations provided by the Warwick, New York, Deluxe Manhattan Hotel. Steps from Radio City, Broadway, and exciting restaurant. Unbelievable $125 rate. Call 800-223-4099. Armatron. America's watch for superb quality, design, and value. Featuring magnificent diamond styling, a watch by Armatron, the hottest fashion for your wrist, and tough, rugged, water-resistant Armatron All Sport. Armatron, America's watch. Killer Loop Performance Sunglasses by Bausch & Lomb. Tested by athletes, not machines. I have a big league baseball encyclopedia for Franklin's digital book system. Retrieves over one million stats and includes every major leaguer to ever wear spikes. Franklin's digital book system, the revolutionary way to access a world of information instantly. Welcome back to Extra Inning here at Shea Stadium. I'm Fran Healy. Big day for the Mets beating the Atlanta Braves. And the Mets on top of the Braves with Mauro Gazzo picking up his second victory of the season. And he joined us on the post-game show. Mauro, congratulations on the victory. And what ran through your mind prior to the game today? Well, I just uh, I knew it was a big series. And I was just trying to keep the uh, team in the ball game. And uh, it ended up that uh, we scored a whole bunch of runs. And uh, I was just trying to throw strikes. And strikes you threw. Now, you, you mixed up your pitches very, very well. Going into the game, did you have a game plan against guys like McGriff and Klesko and, and Dave Justice? Well, definitely. I, I, uh, Pav and I have been working on a uh, curveball, and I threw a few, few curveballs early in the game uh, just to show them a different look. And, uh, and I definitely knew I had to get my off-speed pitch uh, over the plate uh, with my forkball and my uh, curveball, occasional slider to a lefty. And... Uh, that was my game plan, and I really uh, it was pleased with it. 5-0, and oh, eight major league starts. We were asked a question on a pregame show today. Would you be a starter or a reliever? How will the Mets use you? What is your preference? Well, I'd definitely rather start. I mean, but uh, as long as I stay in the major leagues, uh, I don't really uh, mind relieving or anything. I mean, I know that, uh, that uh, uh, Doc has to come back, and he's definitely going to be a starter and all that. But... Uh, I have no problems with uh, being in relief as long as I stay up here. And uh, whether it's, you know, the reason I like starting is because I'm able to, uh, uh, you know, do my program, and I've, I've done that mostly, mostly in the big leagues. From New Britain, Connecticut, to Shea Stadium in Flushing, New York, has not been a straight line. You've been all over. Tell us your feelings right now, winning ball games here at Shea Stadium, not that far from where you grew up. Well, definitely, uh, you know, New York is close. Uh, you know, Connecticut doesn't have a professional team at the major league level. Uh, it's great that, uh, uh, you know, I'm able to play close to my hometown. And, uh, you know, I had 20 or so fans here today, uh, family and friends. And uh, it'd be like that if I was a starter. It'd be like that every time I started. Well, congratulations, Marl. We'll let you get back into the clubhouse once again. The Mets over the Braves in the second game of this three-game series. Mauro Gazzo picking up his second victory in two starts for the Mets since being recalled from AAA. And we'll be back. Well, back here at Shea Stadium, you're watching Extra Inning. The Mets did not need extra innings. They beat the Atlanta Braves in nine innings. The final score, 11-3. Now let's check the highlights from today's ball game. It was a bright and sunny day here at Shea, and the sun played a part in today's game. The Mets get going in the third inning, thanks to Ryan Klesko with John Cangelosi in second. Todd Huntley pops the ball up the left. Klesko loses the ball 
in the sun and drops it for an error. Kangelosi scores it with 1-0 Mets. Then Joe Orsalak drops his base in into left to score Hundley. Klesko throws the ball over home plate. Orsalak goes to second. It was two zip Mets. Klesko's rough inning continues. Bobby Bonilla applies the ball left. Klesko trips and loses the ball. Orsalak scores, and the Mets had a 3-0 lead after three innings of play. Then in the fifth inning with the bases loaded, Ryan Thompson blasts a hanging curveball over the left field fence. It was hit off John Smoltz, Bobby Bonilla, Jeff Kent, and David Segui score. It was 7 nothing, and John Smoltz was not happy. Nowadays, when you hit a home run in baseball, this is what usually happens next. Smoltz hits John Cangelosi with the pitch. Cangelosi charges the mound, and the bench is emptied. Smoltz and Cangelosi were ejected from the ball game after the bench-clearing incident. That's the toughest part of the game right there, the bullpen, and they have to run all the way in. They're not, even, they're not even involved. But the Braves reached the starting pitcher for the New York Mets, Mauro Gazzo, for a run in the seventh as Charlie O'Brien singles a drive in Mark Lemke. It was 7-1 at that time, and that was all for Gazzo. Then ex-Met Bill Pacota singles a drive in Charlie O'Brien and Rafael Pelliard, and the Braves cut the lead to 7-3. But... David Segui answered back with a solo home run, number six on the year for the Met first baseman, and it made it eight to three after seven innings of play. The Mets added three more runs, and the Braves added one more run. The game ended when Terry Pendleton would ground out to Fernando Vena. Mauro Gazzo picking up his second victory of the season, the losing pitcher, John Smoltz. And once again, the Mets over the Braves in the second game of this three-game series, 11-4, and we'll be back. 